And what do you know? We're underway once again in the CD929 Big Room. Warm round of applause for Jake Wesley Rogers. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Tonight at Nationwide Arena alongside Panic at the Disco. So much to talk about in terms of that show, in terms of your music, in terms of your life, but we'll get into it in a moment. How about we start off with the exciting part? Let's hear a song. Let's do it. Hello, everybody. This is my song, Middle of Love. That's amazing. Jake Wesley Rogers, thanks again for swinging by the big room this afternoon. Oh, so happy to be here. Oh, that sounds so cool. So uh, before we get into anything else, for anybody listening to this on the radio that might not uh, be aware, the shoes that you're wearing, gigantic. (laughs) Very big. (laughs) I don't know why. I saw you wearing them earlier. I don't know why I didn't think about like the piano pedal that you're working right there and also the presence of mind I noticed in that song to not kick over your mic stand. Uh, I didn't even think about it. It was so natural. You stepped right over it. <laughs> you know, I'm already pretty tall, but I thought, why not be like seven inches taller? Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is definitely a, a first for me as an interviewer. When I was checking out uh, some of your other interviews in preparation for this, I was like, who was the last guy that interviewed you? Oh, um, Sir Elton John. <laughs> Sweet. Big shoes to fill uh, for me as well. How was the experience talking to, to Elton? He's a huge fan. 
first of all, disorienting, and second of all, <laughs> affirming. Yeah. <laughs> I think I processed it like four months after it happened. Oh, I was yeah. like in a grocery store and just started crying. Making the kind of music I make um, to to have someone like that in my corner, um, who believes in it, is is yeah, it's more than I could ask for. You've been compared before this to like the Elton John for Gen Z. And it's cool like to get the cosign from Elton John himself. Sure, Amazing. yeah, that helps. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Another uh, descriptor as well of you and your work came from Elton John calling you, quote, the bastard child of him and Brandy Carlisle. <laughs> Made even cooler, maybe manifesting a performance with Brandy Carlisle at Elton John's Oscar party. Yeah. Insane. How was yeah. that? Oh, I'm such a huge Brandy Carlisle fan. She, as a songwriter, it really helped me um, start to tell my story fully. So that was, again, a huge compliment. Oh, yeah. Amazing performer. I just got to see her last weekend for the first time. Oh, she's amazing. So awesome. So good. Well, we welcome you here to uh, your first appearance in the CD99 Big Room. I know it's not exactly uh, Elton John's Oscar party, oh, but we thank no, you for your time. Oh, no, this is beautiful. <laughs> um, hopefully, we're making you feel at home as well. We were talking just a minute ago. For anybody that's listening uh, here in Columbus on the radio or online later, we tape this on Wednesday at noon. Uh, which uh, for many of us here in the city we know is the time where all of the tornado sirens go off at once every single week. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about uh, growing up down in, in Missouri. That's like a nostalgic sound for you. Oh, so. yeah. When I heard the siren, I was very unfazed by it. Yeah. We, I spent half my life in a basement. Um, for tornado warnings, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know what it's like, not only uh, to be, you know, from the Midwest as you are, but also uh, in and around uh, radio station. I understand your mom was a rock and roll DJ, is that yes, true? Yes, she was. I, I told her I was coming this morning and I, I sent the station and she said, that is a legendary station. Oh, wow. So it's very happy to, yeah, very, very cool to be here. And yeah, my mom was a DJ. She was in rock radio, like kind of my whole childhood. She's kind of the coolest woman ever. That's great. Well, tell her we, we all send our best. Uh, oh, she'll be listening mom. for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Is that sort of what uh, got you started, do you think, in music? Did she raise you on the right stuff, on the right records? Oh, totally. And I was going to so many concerts as a kid. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, you know, like the DJ would introduce the band and I would go out with her. I remember I was like five and it was a Nelly Furtado concert. Mm. And I was like, Mom, I have to go out there with you. And she's like, <laughs> and I introduced Nelly Furtado. <laughs> That's awesome. And I think I was like up there looking at ten thousand people, and I was like, okay, this is a. This is what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I kind of want to walk it back to that as well, to your to your upbringing in music, not only listening to those great records, but I was surprised to learn that you picked up a guitar as a kid before you picked up a piano. Is I that did. also true? And I really got annoyed that you have to tune it so often. <laughs> so I switched <laughs> yeah. to the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> a keyboard too, not like a piano, way harder to tune. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm never tuning a piano. Yeah. Um, I think I, I really gravitated towards piano because when I was in sixth grade, I loved Regina Spector a lot mm -hmm. and, and, and Gaga and Adele and, you know, kind of these like really fierce piano singer songwriters. Um, so it was kind of a natural progression for me. Yeah. Uh, tonight, before we have you play another one, I do want to give you a quick congratulations on today being the announcement for your new single called Hindsight. Congrats on that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm uh, so excited. What can you tell us about it? Well, I'm really excited because it's going to be in uh, the movie Bros. And Bros is the first gay rom-com made by a major motion picture studio. And this is the, like, the end credits song. Uh -huh. um, yeah, which is a great segue because I thought about playing it next. Oh, nice. <laughs> Perfect. Well, let's go ahead and hear it. It's okay, a CD 9 Big Room. Awesome. Let's do I've never done it without a band, so um, fingers crossed. <laughs> It's okay. 
okay to smile when you're finally happy. But hindsight's 2020, reach for the head at the movies, fall into someone, let them have me. But hindsight's 2020, what's a boy to do with a story in my head that's never true? Side sonnets on it, mistakes, broken plates, backseat, the beast, cotton puff yesterday. Self care to the day, acting like I don't care, screaming about you there. Oh, 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 God, I wish I would have known when I was younger I should have just danced when I didn't want to But hindsight's 2020 Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. My God. Thank you. That is an amazing song. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Jake Wesley Rogers with us in the CD 90 tonight, Big Room. Feeling very moved this afternoon. Hey, I'm trying. Ah. Well, again, uh, we look forward to hearing that new song, Hindsight. Looking forward to hearing some songs from uh, the Pluto EP, which is out now. Uh, I'm curious, with half of the recordings for the, the Pluto EP happening before the pandemic and half of them coming after, do you notice when you listen to it, like a, like a sonic shift of sorts? or? Is yeah, I mean, making music during that time was so interesting. I did a writing trip in London uh, 2019, like the end of 2019, and wrote a lot of the songs, um, but then didn't record them until about, you know, a little over a year ago. So coming back to them kind of after a COVID mindset was really interesting. And now writing, I mean, everything's different, you know? Everything is, I think, in a, from a writing standpoint, standpoint, it made me go in even deeper. Um, like I had no choice to be, be super introspective because I was alone for yeah. months. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it, it's a very real thing. I'm interested to hear about the uh, the writing out in London because I've heard you talking about uh, like spending a little bit of time in like Nashville and a little bit of time in Los Angeles and yeah. uh, uh, finding creativity in like the spaces that you're in and the people that you're around. Are you the kind of writer that, it, you know, it kind of just all flows out of you, you get like a thousand songs and then leave 995 of them on the cutting room floor? Is it more precise? I wish. Yeah. <laughs> right. I want that, whatever that is. Um, it depends. I mean, I lived in Nashville for five years, um, which I'm so glad I did because I think the songwriting there is very special. Um, and I think I, I, I learned how to really craft a song there. Um, but then when I'd go to London or, or LA to write, I feel like I brought that with me. And I do get very inspired by places, which is why like last year I just didn't have a home. I just wanted to kind of live everywhere. And that's kind of when I started writing, I guess my first album that will be out one day um, with that spirit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love it. You take a little bit of you wherever you go yeah. and wind up as the, the sum of all of those exactly. parts and wind up with an ex inspiring catalog of music over the years. Uh, uh, Life-changing for many, as you know. Uh, you mentioned in a different interview one of like the most profound statements that I've heard in a long time, which is that like the goal of an artist is to just kind of drop these keys mm. into your songs. Can you expand on that for our audience as well? Oh, yeah, I guess what I mean by that is I think everybody's in a cage of some sort. Um, and, and when we listen to art, listen to music, or, or see a movie or something, it's like, it can unlock you very gently. And the thing about dropping keys is the person doesn't have to pick it up. Yeah. You know, they have the choice. And that's what music's done for me. Um, you know, when I was 12 and, and realized I was gay, you know, I was kind of in the, the closet cage. And then I live that cage. And then I'm in kind of this new cage, which is being out and... and it's amazing and it's much better than the closet cage, but it's still, you know, defining yourself by anything, if you over identify with it, can become restrictive. So mm -hmm. I guess um, in my music, I just, I, I think about that and I try to write songs that are, that are keys for me first. Yeah. Yeah. 
God, that's amazing. I love the concept that I, I actually kind of hate the concept. It's a very challenging concept, but <laughs> that, that we're all, no matter what, like in our cages right now, we just have to find out what that is. And, right. Uh, Breaking free of all of the, which I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it might, might explode. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time will tell. We hope not. Yeah. But uh, yeah. the keys that have helped so many people find their way to, uh, to being their authentic self, I hope you have uh, some way of taking stock of all that, perhaps as you stare out into the crowd tonight. Again, at Nationwide Arena with Panic at the Disco. Before we send you off to sound check, I do want to run you through a quick lightning round here at the end. Are you ready for some rapid fire? I'm nervous, but yes. Well, we'll start with a really easy one. I think okay. we all know the answer to coffee or tea. Tea. You're notoriously a, uh, a loose leaf tea drinker, uh, steeped with your earrings sometimes. sometimes. I love those. <laughs> um, would you ever approach a bag tea? I can go either way, you know? Okay. I think there's something about seeping with your ear that mm -hmm. makes the tea taste better, I think. <laughs> no matter yeah. where it comes from. No matter where it comes from, yeah. <laughs> I love that. What are you sipping on today? I gave up caffeine for this tour, which I know oh, is very, nice. very brave. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I have a lot of herbal tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of good, like, loose leaf, like, good teas for my throat and staying mm. healthy and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. A little more than a month to go until Halloween. Do you have a costume in mind? Well, I've been a witch for the past six years <laughs> on Halloween and I guess in life, but um, <laughs> I don't know if that will, if that will change this year. I okay. love, I, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be in New Orleans on Halloween, so I feel like I have to oh, be a witch. Of course, yeah. yeah. At least yeah. this year. Exactly. For sure. <laughs> okay, well, one last question for you, and then we'll have you play another. It's a question I like to ask every single artist that I come across. I'm working on a map here, okay. and I'd like you to define your prettiest American state in terms of its geographical outline alone. Oh, that's a really amazing question. I think Louisiana. <laughs> yes. You're you know what I mean? That's my number one. Is it? Yeah. Well, so. I think it's my favorite. I think, well, New Orleans is kind of my favorite place on mm -hmm. earth, but yeah, there's just a lot going on there. It kind of feels like a Mediterranean, like the shape of it, it feels kind of Mediterranean. Yeah. It doesn't really feel like the other states to me. It's kind of the vibe of New Orleans is kind of like that too. It's true. Yeah. And anything that can remind you of that is a good thing. Exactly. I love it. Sharon, Sharon, a favorite state shape. We'll yeah, have you play another. I love it. <laughs> Wesley Rogers in the CV90 awesome. Time Paper. Thank you, Grayson. This is my song, Pluto. <laughs> when I was a kid, Pluto was still a planet. I'm still kind of sad about it. Oh, thought I was the best. Till someone made me doubt it. I'm still kind of mad about it. I could buy me a rainbow. I'm a little afraid, though. It won't look good with my halo. Hey.
send you back down to Control Central. Yay! We did it. 